Okay, and good morning to this morning's Fab Ab class and stretch for all. So, um, this is two classes in one. It normally takes around about an hour. Um, we normally mix and match it, so sometimes we do the stretching for all first, and sometimes we do the Fab Ab first. So, we just like to mix it up a little bit because I know some of you can only join in on the second half. So, today we're going to start off with our Fab Abs, but of course, as always, we're going to warm up. You will need a mat for the fab abs because we're going to be mostly uh, down on the floor and we've got a little bit of standing a little bit later on through the routine. Make sure you have water, always very important. And please ladies and gentlemen listen to your body. So a couple of the exercises might not be right for you. So you need to be able to modify anything that doesn't suit you. Uh, that's very important. Um, I know a couple of you sometimes will text me after the class and ask for modification if I don't a modification in so please do continue to do that or indeed put something on our website um, and I will always get back to you so without further ado I'm just going to move my mat out the way so we can get warmed up so a nice gentle warm-up this morning so we're going to do a standing warm-up starting with our head and shoulders <clears throat> so just tuck the head down drop the chin to chest and bring the head up and down one more time and up and we're going to take the head to one side back to center and to the other side good one more time take it to the side center and side good and now we're just going to hunch up the shoulders and drop them back down by the side hunch them up down to the side. One more time. And down to the side. Now just make sure you've got nice soft knees, tucking in the tummy, keeping the back nice and straight. And we're just going to swing and rotate our torso nice and gently. Good. Keep breathing, breathing through the swinging and rotating. Really feeling it in that nice lower back and up through the spine. We've got three more, two, one. Now we're going to rotate the hips. So keeping it nice and gentle, rotating, big circular movements, pushing out the hip as you push through, push out, bring it back to the front, push out and back. Now let's go the other way. So out to the front. You can lift the heel on each of the feet as your rotations get a little bit bigger. Good. And last one, lovely. <clears throat> now put your feet facing forward and just come down very gently into that squat position. So from the side, nice soft knees but sticking out at the bottom. We're keeping our knees in line with our toes. We don't need to go down too far because this is just a warm up. Just to start with those hips, knees, nice and slow to warm up. Good. We do two more of those. Last one. Good job. Now take the feet a little bit wider. Make sure your feet are still facing forward. Nice soft knees and then just come down side to side. And opening up those inner thigh joint areas. Getting those adductors working. Keeping that chest up nice and tall. Now again, you may be doing it here on the knee, that's absolutely fine. Just making sure as you come forward, you've got a straight leg and the opposite knee is in line with the toe. All the way around, straight leg, knee, line with toe. Good. So you decide which is right for you. Remember this is just your warm up. Just warming up all those lovely joints and muscles. Good. And come up, now bring that knee in, and drop it down, good. Now again, if you need to, you can hold on to a wall while you're doing this, and just clasp one hand. I don't have a wall, so I'm pretending. Bring that knee in, good. And again, don't put too much pressure around the knee joint. Hold just beneath the knee. Good, make sure you're sucking in that tummy. Keep that back nice and strong. 
Working that core at the same time. That really looks good. Let's just do some slamming toe touches. This is one of the exercises we're going to be doing in our ab routine. This also works your abdominals quite nicely in a standing position, working through the core. Let's do three more. Two and one. Good. Let's just turn that torso a little bit more now. It's a little bit warmer. So follow with the head all the way around. All the way around. Good. Keeping that tummy really nice and tucked in. Really activating those core muscles, back muscles, and through the spine. Very important. Down through the neck. Do three more. Three, two, and one. Excellent work, lovely. So have a little sip of water. Um, I'm very sorry, but I did forget to tell you, you will need some light weights for today's ab exercise because we're going to be working very light weights. So it doesn't matter if you don't have weights, you can do this exercise routine without weights, just using your body weight. But if you want a few seconds to go and grab a couple of light weights, uh, nothing heavier than three kilos, please, because it is a lot of repetition. <clears throat> and we really want to work the abdominals on, in a slow and controlled way. So I don't want anybody having anything too heavy. So maybe a couple of bottles of water, a couple of cans of food, whatever. So a quick sip of water and then join me down here on the mat. Good job, grab your weights, excellent. So I'm just going to get a different routine because what we're gonna do, we're gonna work through the exercises today, but we're gonna take it really slow and controlled because we really need to activate those abdominal muscles. So when we're talking about abdominals, we're not just talking about uh, the front abdominal muscles, obviously you've got side abdominal muscles, you've got oblique muscles. And we also need to work and, and work through the, the uh, thoracic area of our spine, so the lower back, um, into, um, the midsection and even bringing in the shoulders and the neck when we're working those abdominals it all um, attaches and, and helps each other so we're very much concentrating on that area today so because it's slow and controlled we're going to do each exercise for a minute a couple of them when we do right and left I'm going to swap halfway through so we're going to do it for 30 seconds there are the ones that are a little bit tougher um, but we've got a couple of sets anyway so that you can ease into it so again, really important, listen to your body. Some of these exercises you will need to modify yourself. Some of the exercises I can show you modifications for. We've got a whole minute to so take it easy, work into it um, and, and enjoy it. So grab your weights, let's get down on the mat. And we're gonna start off with some uh, dead bug toe touches, which I know you've all done. So I'm gonna put a minute on the clock. Oh. Sorry, it always starts with a bit of Christmas music when I use this app, <laughs> which is completely wrong because it's the wrong season. So bear with me. Bear with me. Right. Okay. Let's hopefully now when I go back into it, it will pick up the right music. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Don't need to have music, of course, but I do like to have a little bit of background music. So let's get down on the floor. Our minute has started, so we are going to be in a dead bug position, but our legs are going to be tabletop. So opposite arm, opposite leg, we're going to push it away. So this leg, that arm goes away, and then bring it in. Good. Away, and bring it in. Now think about your abdominal muscles, really squeezing in that belly button. I'm just making sure you can see me from here. Yes, I think you can. Good. Pushing the back into the floor, making sure that we're squeezing those muscles. Good. Now, if you do need to modify this exercise, it may well be that you just pop the weights down, or it may be that you use a lighter weight, because the knees are bent, so it shouldn't put too much pressure on your back. So we've got five seconds, we're going to go into a Russian twist. So you're just going to need one weight for this. You're going to either have your feet on the floor. Turn this way so you can see my back. 
Now keeping our back nice and straight, nice and strong, the chest is up. And each time we follow with the head. And again, we don't take it too fast. We're squeezing in that tummy, but we're protecting our lower back. So we're not set up too tall. We're squeezing that tummy. Good. Now you can stay here with your feet on the floor, or if you choose, you can lift the feet up. Good. This one is slightly harder because you have to hold your balance. Make sure you're tucking that pelvis under to protect that lower back. Very important. So your modification obviously is to keep your feet on the floor, use a lighter weight or use no, no weight at all. Good. Excellent work. Let me just turn around here. So now you're going to grab both your weights. You're going to sit on your back. So I love on your back. <coughs> Hands behind your head. Feet in tabletop position. Come up and down. Now don't let your feet touch the ground. Good. Squeeze up. So this is your crunch position here. And lower down. And crunch. And up. Good. Now if you need to modify this, you need to drop the weights down. Also you can just do the crunch from here. So it's a slightly smaller movement because you're not taking your arms above the head. If you can, I want you to bring your arms all the way around, crunch it here and back. Good. So although I'm dropping my feet down, I'm not letting my toes touch. Let me move back a little bit so you can see my feet. So crunch it up, just let the toes go down, but don't touch the floor. Keep that going. Good job. Now we're going to go into a side plank position. So we're doing our side plank twist. So remember, you're either going to do a plank in this full position up here and twist. So we're going to do each side 30 seconds. So get ready to turn around. Now remember, some of you will be doing your plank in this position. So you've got your bottom knee bent down, top knee, top leg is straight. It's your choice. We're going to change in three, two, and one. Swap it round. Get. I think I need to change my tablet around the other side. You keep going. I left it in this not upright position. And I should have turned it. So you can see all of me. Much better, isn't it? There we go. Keep going, guys. See what I'm doing now. That's it. Lovely. Twist. Open. Twist. Fantastic. We will be doing that again later on because we're only 30 seconds for each side. Now again, we're going to do some straight leg sit-ups. So, this is, I'm going to start off with our straight leg sit-up. So you can come up and push nice and high, roll down. Come up, high and roll down. If you want to make it harder, you keep the weights against the chest. So all you're doing is using those abdominals to pull you up. And when you roll down, make sure you're rolling the spine down. And up. Now, again, modifications. If you have a problem with your back or you're struggling with this, please bend the legs and just come up and down. With or without your weights, keep your feet firmly on the floor and just do some nice crunches, lifting the upper back so your shoulders, head and neck must come off the floor. So you're going to choose which modification suits you better. A few more seconds here. Excellent work. Now we've got some scissor crunches. So we're going to start and keeping our arms up nice and tall. We're going to raise the legs. So this is our start position. Now we're going to drop one leg down, but don't let it touch the floor. The other leg drops down to meet it. Hold it there. 
Bring the first leg back up and meet it up with the second leg. Good, so that's our movement. But we start with one, the opposite leg each time. So the leg goes down, second one goes down to meet it. Don't let those feet touch the floor. First leg comes up, second leg comes up. Good, keep going. Down, down, up, up. If you need to modify this, just bend the legs. Touch it down, go to meet it. Roll it up, roll it up. Good, so your choice, which option you're going to do. Make sure you're sucking that tummy in and pushing that back into the floor. You need to protect that lower back at all times. Good. Lovely work. <clears throat> now we've got the right side plank and the hip dip. Again, we're gonna do 30 seconds on each side. So you're either gonna start off in a full or half plank, full plank position and dip the hip. So what I'm doing with the weight is I'm just adding a bit more resistance. Again, 30 seconds on each side. Remember, if you want to tuck your leg under, that's absolutely fine. You choose which option is right for you. Make sure you've got a nice, even long line from the top of your head to your toes. One long line. Ready to change. In two, one, change it over. Get. Great work. Lovely. For 15 more seconds to go here. Keep squeezing and pushing. Good. Nearly there. Two more seconds. Three, two, one. Lovely. And turn it around. This is where we come up onto our feet. <coughs> so I'm gonna have to just turn away. This back up the other way. Okay, so we've got some side bends, but it's slightly different. So I want you to keep the weights in just on the front, and as you bend down, I want you to just always fold down the front of the leg. I don't know if you can see the difference here. Let me just do one more. Now, if you have the weights here, and you're bending to the side, can you see the difference? I don't want you to do that exercise today. I want the weights at the front, and you sort of bend almost forward. So you're really pinching in, in this waist area here. So forward, forward. Okay, so it's not forward like the front, it's forward, almost at a 45 degree angle. I'm hoping you can see the difference here, I'm sure you can. We've got 10 more seconds here, really squeeze. Squeeze it down, squeeze it down. Good. Excellent work. Good. We will be doing that again later on. So again, remember, it's not a side bend. It's almost like a 45 degree. So you're coming forward. Let the weight travel down the front of the thigh. Now we're going to do some standing toe touches. So we're going to touch the toes. Now we've got to think about those abdominals. Really squeeze the tummy. Now you can of course, do some knee touches. It's all about this area here in this tummy. So as you come up, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze, even if it's the knee, squeeze, squeeze it here, good. Think about that tummy all the time. Visualize those muscles, it helps. When you're doing an exercise. Squeeze. Squeeze. Good job. Remember, you don't need to use the weight. You can pop the weights down. Ten seconds to go. Good. Excellent work. Pop one weight down. We're going to do a wood chop. So we're going to start just over the shoulder, nice soft knees, and we're going to chop it down and bring it up, chop it down, bring it up, good, 
You think about those side muscles. Squeeze the tummy in. Get. Getting nice and low. Low as you can go. All the way up, good. This is full range of movement. Now if that's not for you, we're just gonna keep it here. Keep it there. Are you ready to change sides? In three, two, one. Start on this side, all the way down. Good. Good job. Now, in this first set, we're going to go down back on the floor and just repeat the ones that we needed for 30 seconds. So we don't want to dip out on anything, do we? No, of course we don't. So this will be one of them, but we'll start back down on the mat. So we're going to start off with our side planks. So you can start, and actually I'm going to start on the other side because I just want to do that and move you around. Are you ready? Side planks. Where the rotation. Get. Keep it strong. Under. Good. Remember, this is only 30 seconds. Then we're going to repeat on the other side. And then we're going to go straight into our plank side dips. 10 more seconds here. Get. Swap sides. Good job. Keep it going. Now, in case you're wondering, I know we don't normally swap sides halfway through. This is because it's round one and the first set. So what we want to make sure that we don't strain anything. So when we go through into the second set, we will do these for a full minute without the repeater. Good job. Let's go into that side plank. We're going to do some nice dips. Remember, you've got your different options of the plank. You could be doing a, a plank with your bottom knee tucked under. Just make sure that you're squeezing up. You see, I just adjusted my arm there because I could see that my shoulder and my arm weren't stacked. It's really important that you keep that stacked. So from here to your elbow, make sure it's in line. That way it's going to uh, protect that rotated cuff. Ooh, change. Change from the screen. Got carried away then, thought I was in the minute one. <laughs> That's the next set. That's set two. Good. Are you squeezing as you come up? Squeeze. Squeeze. Lovely job. Squeeze. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, that's going to be fun. We'll do it for a minute. Okay, last exercise, which we swapped for 30 seconds, was the wood drop. So start from the other direction, and we're going to chop from side to side. So, as I say, in the second set, Every exercise we're going to do for a minute. But if you need to, obviously, you must take a break. That's really important. I'm going to change. Good. Change it here. I'm just looking at the clock, wondering if we're going to get these exercises in. Two, four, six, eight, ten. No, we're not. We're going to have to change it, I'm afraid. I know, it's such a shame, but I have to be on time to the second class. Otherwise, I would have just carried on. Don't worry. We'll get through them all. Okay. Let's grab a quick drink while I just adjust. This. So I think we're going to have to do uh, let's have another think. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to be able to get in a minute for each one, I'm afraid. So let's try 40. 
We'll do 40 seconds, 10 second recovery. We'll work, we'll, we'll overrun a little bit, but um, any other way we do it is, we'll do 30 seconds continuous. That's what we'll do. Each exercise we're gonna continue doing to 30 seconds. So, not exactly what I wanted to do, but obviously we've only got half our class. So, do not despair, ladies. We will get it all in. Dead bug toe touches. Dead bug toe touches, yes. Let's go, let's go. Now really squeeze that tummy in. Good. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Next exercise. Russian twist. Feet on the floor or feet down. Good. Really squeeze it in. Squeeze. Squeeze. We got those behind butt crunches. Coming up next in three, two, and one. Get squeeze it. Now remember, you might be doing a slightly modified one. Good. So if you can, drop the feet down, but don't let those toes touch the floor. Ready for those plank rotations? We're going to do right side first for 30 seconds, then the left. Here we go. Squeeze it in. Ten seconds to go. Ready to change sides. Three, two, one, change sides. And squeeze. And squeeze. 15 more seconds to go. And five. What's next? Straight leg sit ups. Three, two, one. Straight leg sit ups. Keep them in the chest. Or take them up high. Give you a little bit of propel propulsion if you're using that method. Remember, you can also keep the knees bent if that helps you. We've got three seconds. We're going into those scissor drop crunches. So, drop one down, second one joins it, up, up, opposite leg down. Remember you might be doing this with bent legs. You choose which one is right for you. We got right side plank dips. I know it's fast and furious, <laughs> but at least we did a good minute on our first round. So this is like our round of just really ramping it up a little bit, pushing it a bit more. 10 seconds, we're gonna swap. <sighs> squeeze the hip up, come on, push. Squeeze, squeeze. Two, one, swap. Quick as you can. Swap it round. That's it. This weight's just giving a little bit more resistance from those squeezes. Okay, this is our last one on the floor. Then we're going to stand up. We've got three standing exercises. Are you ready to come up in five, three, two, one? Up you come. We got those front side bends. Down the front. 
Good. 15 seconds to go. We did start a few minutes late. Nobody's, I don't think anybody's joined us just yet, so that's quite good. So thank you for the people that are on this class, because I had to modify it slightly. Toe touches on the second set. Because when I prepared this class, it's actually a 45 minute class. Exactly, I'm nearly have half an hour. So unless I've got my special time machine, which I don't, it's at the Menders, I need to should have modified it to begin with, but there you go. I think everyone's enjoyed it. A good bit of an ab workout. We've got our last exercise now with those wood chops. So we're gonna go, wood chop. Back to center, down, back to center. So we're doing alternating wood chop. We've only got 30 seconds. Remember to try and chop high, go as low down as you can. Think about those abdominals, squeezing them. Good, squeeze here, squeeze. Last one. Excellent work, well done. Woo. We're just gonna have a little stretch out before we start our next stretching class. But I know some of you won't be able to stay for that, so. I still want to stretch out my first class. So just rotate those shoulders and breathe. Good. So your heart rate should have come up a little bit. Breathing is a little bit heavier. There's a little bit of cardio in there because whenever you do any exercise, if it raises the heart rate, you are going to also have to breathe a little bit heavier. Good. Let's just turn from side to side. Keep this knee soft here. Look after that lower back. So if you are joining me for the second class, which I hope you can, we're going to do some, <coughs> some stretches to activate muscles that we sometimes struggle getting going. It often gives, uh, leads to soreness or back pain or neck pain. So I've done a little bit of research and I've got some great exercises that everybody can do whenever. Let's do some hip rolls. So hopefully you'll be able to join me and I'll explain a little bit more in detail. And go around the other way. Good. Get those feet nice and wide. Just squat down and up nice and gently. Get that chest up. Always keeping in that core nice and tight. We need to keep that core strong. Squeeze the tummy in. Good. Let's do a full body roll down. So standing up nice and tall. Let the arms drop down. Follow with the head. Keep the knees soft. Now just roll down the body, let the head hang heart, heart heavy, let the arms hang heavy. Now lock out the knees, feel that lovely stretch up the back of the legs, and then let yourself roll up nice and slowly. Slowly and easy. Good job. Lovely work. Okay, so grab yourself a drink. Hopefully you're going to be staying with me. We'll give it a, a minute or two more to see if anyone else is joining us. You won't need the weights, you can pop the weights out of the way. And I shall get some nice stretching music on. Because this is all very easy, easy stretching for everybody. Anyone can do these stretches. Okay, good. So, quick drink. So, it's only 10 past. So, I'll just see if there's anyone else coming in to join us. Okay. 
Right. Okay. Right. Well, at the moment, it is just you and me, Maria, still. We have an exclusive club, which is fantastic. So, hopefully, you're going to be able to stay. So, I will just explain to um, anyone else who's watching on YouTube. Um, we've, I do this stretching class because it's really important to uh, stretch out. This, is, this is, should be a daily thing, it should be part of your routine, like brushing your teeth. And I know a couple of people that have sent me emails and texts um, about uh, different parts of their body that they feel um, gives them a bit of grief. So they might have some neck pain, they might have some low back pain, they might have pains in their hips. So I like to listen to my clients. So what I did is I did a little bit of research um, and I've come up with some, a couple of exercises that I'd like to try with you today. Um, we will have a good stretch first of all, but then I want to just show you a couple of these stretches uh, that I feel may be beneficial to people. And I'm going to explain to you why they'll be beneficial to you. So it won't be for everybody, but it could be, a, could be one or two in here that you might think, well, do you know, I'm going to try that because I've got a bit of middle back or I'm a bit stiff across the top of the shoulders or uh, across the neck. Um, or even sometimes um, in your ankles. Um, and sometimes these will give you deferred pain. So you might have uh, a pain in the knee, but it could actually be because you've got a weak glute. So we'll talk a little bit, of, bit more about that uh, later in, but we do need to just stretch to begin with. Um, and I must, met, <laughs> I must tell you, of course, I'm not medically trained, so if you have any problems at all, and you feel that you, you need to get advice, always seek professional advice, but these stretches might help, help you. So let's start off with some nice gentle stretching to begin with, and then we'll go into those uh, ones a little bit later through. So we're gonna just start off thinking about our posture as we always do when we're thinking about stretching. So have your feet, um, I say with hip distance apart, I, I always have mine a little bit wider, um, just because it gives me a little bit better balance. And think about your toes. Try and spread the toes so that your the weight is evenly distributed throughout the whole of that foot. And then think about the ankles. Keep them nice and soft. Come up through the shins. Think about the knees. Don't lock the knees out again. Nice and soft, so you should be able to be nice and flexible there. Coming up through um, your thighs and then into the glutes. So again, keeping that nice and strong because all of this area here, this is all connected. So obviously your whole spine is what works to keep you upright and gives you that good posture. And think about your tummy. Always make sure that you've got your pelvis tucked under and your belly button sucked in. And then that's going to protect your lower back, all up into the spine, coming up through uh, the top half of your body. Think about the arms and the shoulders. Again, we try not to hunch up. A lot of us do that, especially if we're uh, tense or um, if we're having a, um, a bit of a tough day for, for whatever. Um, sometimes you can feel it in your shoulders when you get that tightness. So we're always trying to talk about relaxing the shoulders. Let the hands hang heavy. Think about your fingers, just give them a little bit of a wiggle. And then think about the neck area, because of course this is all connected. So more importantly, I think, think about the back of the neck. Always trying to elongate the neck, keeping the airway open, lifting the chest. So as you lift the chest, your pelvis tucks under, and then this gives you this nice strong core throughout. So now that we've got our posture right, which is very important, we're just going to nod the head down. So that's going to stretch down the back of the neck, and then we're going to raise the head back up. And we're going to nod the head one more time. And we're going to bring it up. Now from here, if this is right for you, or you can continue with your head nods, we're going to take the head to one side very gently. And we're going to bring it back. So we're going to try and keep this movement fluid. So it doesn't stop. And each time that you rotate the head, you might be able to take it round a little bit more. But really think about where your shoulders are now. If they start to just hunch a little bit. Sometimes when you've got a little bit of neck stiffness, as you go around, what you'll feel is, I, sh I should exaggerate this, but you could do this. Okay, 
So really think about the shoulders going down. Just do one more on each side. Good, back centre. Good. And then finish off back in the centre. And then if you want to, just pop your hand very gently by the side of your head. And just tilt the head to one side. This hand is just giving a tiny, weeny little bit of pressure, not too much. And that, good. And then drop that hand down. Again, just do it to the other side, nice and easy. Still keeping that core tight, sucking in that tummy. And back to centre. Good job. And then as we always do, we're just going to hunch those shoulders up really tight. So really squeeze those shoulders up. Now relax the shoulders down. You can feel the difference. As you squeeze up, this gives you possibly a little bit of neck pain because that's not a good position to be in. So push down with those shoulders. Good. One more time. Squeeze it up. And push it down. Good. Now let's think about the arms. Let them hang really heavy and just wiggle those fingers at the bottom. Good. Now we're going to start with the right hand. We're going to push up with the palm facing down. All the way up to the ceiling. And then we're going to push down again. Now I'm going to lead with my palm of my hand. So I'm pushing down. Good. Push it back as far as it will go. And then up again. Good. Keeping that tummy really tucked in, sucked in, pelvis tucked under. Good. Now leave that arm down and let's do the other one. So really take it up. Good. And then lead back down with the palm of the hand. Push it back. Good. So we're really allowing that joint to move freely. There's no tension in that joint. Really easy, just it. Good. Got one more here, and then we're going to do alternates. Good. We're going to take this arm up, that arm back, and reverse. Good. Now think about when you get here. Try not to tense up. Just allow the arms to flow. Good. Lovely. Let's do two more. One. Two. Back down to the side. Good. Now take this arm across the body and let it flow out and across and out. And just follow it with the rest of the body. Good, this is really nice. So we've worked the shoulder up and down. We're working it from side to side. Do one more here. We're going to change arms. Good. Now the other one. Now, have you lost that tension in that core? I want you to think about the core all the time. Sucking in that belly. Tucking under that pelvis. Think about your core being your stability with everything you do. You're standing, you're sitting, driving, mowing the lawn, riding your bike, sucking that tummy all the time. Just, it's a second nature thing to do. Good, last one. Excellent. Now we're just gonna roll those hips. Now let's make these roll, hip rolls really big and accentuated. Good. So first of all, we're keeping the heels on the floor. Now, if you want to, you can pick that heel up, really push that to the side, bending the knee, and the other one. Good. Don't have to pick the heels up if you don't want to, be happy here. Turn it around the other way. Good. Sometimes it just helps when you want to push a little bit more. Good. Now stay here. Take your feet out nice and wide. Now bring your body down. And just do it to the side. So you're in a parallel position. Keep the hands, the hip, the hands on the hips. Good. 
Now I want you to bend the knees forward and bring the bottom down as low as you can. Now keep looking forward. I'm only looking to the side so obviously I can, I can see you all. So keep that nice and wide. So really opening up these hip flexors, working the outer part of the hip. Good. Now just come up really, really slowly. Good. Now just allow the spine just to dip a little bit, push the hips forward. Good. Bring the hands and the elbows behind. Excellent, it's a really lovely stretch. Now we'll do that one more time. So start in a nice standing position. Make sure your feet are facing forward. Hands on hips or wherever they're comfortable. Now come down to that parallel position with the upper part of your body. At the moment my, my knees are locked out. Good. Now I'm going to soften the knees. I'm going to try and sit down so that I'm in a 90 degree angle here and my bottom's level with my knees. Good. Really opening up those hip flexors, that hip joint. Good. Come up nice and slowly. Slowly does it. Now allow yourself just to tilt back, put the hands in the small of the back, squeeze the elbows together, open up the chest. Good job. Excellent work. Now I'm just going to do a couple of little roll downs. So with these roll downs, I want you to have your feet together. If you do have a wall that you can lean against, I'll just show you here against this little part of this wall. Um, if you can, make sure your bottom is attached to the wall, but make sure your feet are probably about six or eight inches away. Put your hands up and then just allow them to come down. So the hands come down first. Drop the chin to the chest. Now when you get here, keeping the bottom attached to the wall, you're just going to do the roll down. So you may just go to the knees, you might go to your shins. Just take the roll down as far down as you can. Keep your bottom attached to the wall. Because that way, when you're doing that roll down, you know that you've kept in that nice position. All you've done is roll down. Can you see? Roll down, roll down, roll down. So this part of me hasn't moved. So I'm rolling down, rolling down, rolling down, rolling down. And squeeze it. So I'll get a lovely stretch right away out the back of those legs. I'm still sucking in that tummy. Good. And then when you're ready, just roll up nice and gently. Good. Excellent work. So that's a really nice top to toe stretch that we've done. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to introduce a couple of these little stretches. Um, there are probably more than I can fit in with the time that we've been allowed. So <clears throat> I'm just going to talk about the, a very easy one that everybody can do. Um, it's about heel walking. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody do heel walking. Basically all you're doing is you're walking on your heels. So you can have a little try with it with me now. What the hill walking does is it improves, if you're a runner especially, it can improve what they call your running gait. So it's, if you are a runner um, and you get tightness around the heel area or up through the thigh, or indeed if you get shin splints, this is a really good exercise. You can do it standing still, you don't have to walk around. A really good exercise for shin splints. But what it can also do, <coughs> it can improve if you've got any knee pain or hip pain or indeed low back pain just something like this because what it could be again as i talked about earlier with deferred pain it can be a pain that isn't actually where you're getting the pain so it could just be that you have problems with your ankles now um i don't know some of you may know that i used to play netball at quite a high level and I had so many injuries on my right ankle that i had to, I had to give up and I certainly have struggled with coming down. So if I would say squatting, if I'm squatting with a barbell, I actually have a really bad technique. I don't show people how to squat very often. And that's purely because of my ankle, because when it repaired itself, um, I didn't work it enough to get that repair done. So it's something as simple as that that can, in later life as well, because we all think we're invincible when we're in our twenties, um, it can affect you. So. A little bit of hill walking may actually help with you. Just give it a try and see how you get on. Uh, the second one that exercise I want to do is something that we've probably all done because I think most of us 
um, a concept has either done yoga or Pilates at one stage, or given it, certainly given it a try. So it's the downward dog to runner's lunge exercise, which is a really, really good exercise. Um, it's, it, it, it's an exercise, I don't know if you've ever heard about people that have weak glutes. Um, if you have a weak glute, again, it can affect your back, it can affect your hips, it can even affect your knee. Sometimes it's to do with this IT band that runs along the side here. So we're all thinking about muscles and joints. So by having a weak glute, um, it can actually affect, not just give you pain, but it can also affect your posture. So this is a really good exercise to activate glute muscles. So very simple to do. I'm sure you've all done it before. So you just go into a downward dog position. So get into your downward dog position, however you get down there. And just think about your downward dog position. Um, making sure that you're pushing uh, your head uh, forward, sorry, pushing your head through the arms and just a little bit of an arch in that back, pushing the heels down so you get that nice stretch in the leg. And then all you're going to do is you're going to bring, we we'll start with the right leg, hopefully you can still see me, the right leg into the runner's lunge. So you bring that leg forward in line with this hand. So let me just do that again forward on because I'm not sure if you actually saw that. So this is your downward dog, which is a great exercise to do. And then you just bring that foot, this leg forward. So let me see if you can see me. Yes, I think you can. So from this angle, this is your runner's lunge. So you can see here, I'm activating this glute muscle to do it because I'm pushing from here, from that position, and I'm bringing it forward. So I have to activate that glute. It's also really good for your hip flexors that run up here, so into the groin area. It's a really great exercise. So we're just gonna do a couple of those, just so you can get into it. If you have any questions, please do either text me or um, send me a link through the uh, website or you can email me. So, get into that downward dog position. And then, bring that leg forward into that runner's lunge. Good. Now again, a couple of little tips here. What you don't want to do is you don't want to um, <clears throat> uh, drop the spine down too far. So try and keep that leg up. Now, if you are a beginner at this, you can drop the knee down. Let me do it the other way. So if you're a beginner, this is your downward dog position. And then I'm going to bring this leg forward. Now, if you can keep it up, if not, you can drop that leg down, that knee down to the floor, absolutely fine. So you can just start there and begin. If you, but if you can, really keep this area here open as far as you can. Good. The other one that a beginner can do, is you can do it on a chair. Make sure it's pushed against a, an object. So you can do your downward dog from here, and then you can bring yourself forward into that position. As you can see, because you're not in that, uh, um, that floor position, as you bring this leg in, it's a little bit easier on your joints. So have a little go at that. As I say, if you have any problems at all with lower back, pain in the hips, pain in the knees, it could be something like that that's going to be able to help you. Uh, now I know a couple of you have got some sort of neck and shoulder injury. So again, this is a nice little exercise that we can all do. You can do it standing, you can do it seated. And that's called a winged chest stretch. So it's almost exactly what it says. So when we think about, we're always talking about your scapula, your shoulder blades, when we're talking about um, retracting, when we're pushing back, when we're protracting, it's really important. And this is often an area, if you don't do it right, that can lead to shoulder pain and neck pain. So the winged chest stretch is a really simple exercise to do. So just pop your hands, don't link your fingers, pop your hands on the back of your head so you're in a winged position. Tummy tucked in, knees nice and soft. And all you're going to do from here is bring the elbows together and take them back out. So it's that simple. But I do need you to think about your shoulder blades and your scapula. So as you bring those elbows together, you're opening up 
the shoulder blades. So you're rounding the shoulder blades. And then as you bring them back, you're bringing those shoulder blades back in together. So you're squeezing, you're retracting the shoulder blades. So protract, push them away. Retract, squeeze them back. It's a lovely, gentle exercise that you can do. This is gonna help your neck and your shoulders. Now, again, if you find that too difficult, if you can't bring those shoulders together, just pop your fingertips on the temples and bring them in that way. So your elbows are a little bit lower. So again, it should be something that most people can do, unless you have a really bad injury. So obviously, if you've got any injuries and this isn't for you, please don't do them. These are just exercises that could possibly help people um, if they're nursing an injury, okay, but obviously always seek medical advice. And the other one you can do is just by putting your hands on your hips and squeezing back here and bringing them forward. So again, we're retracting, they're squeezing their shoulder blades together, really pushing out the chest, and then you're bringing them forward, contracting, so pushing the shoulder blades away. Lovely, simple exercise. So again, do give these a little try. Something that everybody can possibly do, unless you have really, really bad pain in those shoulders or neck, then obviously if it's not for you, don't do it. What are we doing for time? I've probably got time for one more. Um, which one shall I do? Um, yeah, let's do the what we call the inch run. Again, you've probably heard about the inch run. There's different variations. Um, this is an inch run, but will help with full body. It's a full body activation exercise if you do it correctly. And the probably the, the thing that a lot of people do incorrectly, and that's purely down to posture and mobility, um, is they, they do it with soft knees. So yes, if you're a beginner, you may well have to do it with soft knees, but ideally, the way you want to end up is by doing it with straight legs. So when we're talking about the inch run, you need to keep your legs straight. Um, but again, you can do a slightly lower range of motion version by doing this on a chair or a bench. So let me do it side on just so that you can see. So we're starting off in a nice position. Do it up here, I think, because I need a bit of room. So a nice stood up position. Now, you see my legs are straight and that's where they need to stay. So I am going to lock out my knees. So I'm just going to let myself roll down. So we, we, we know about body roll downs. So we're gonna roll out the body. Now from here, I'm gonna walk my hands out. But this is the important bit. It's ideally you need to keep the legs straight. So if you can't keep them straight here, I'll show you a version where you can do it on a chair so that you can keep the legs straight. So we're gonna walk down, let the head fall down. Now I'm going to walk the hands out. Now you could be on crab fingers or you could be flat hands. That bit doesn't matter. Just keep these legs straight. So you're going to walk the hands out. Come down, come down, come down. I'm going to have to just change a little bit so you can see me. And then we're going to allow the body to come all the way down into this cobra position. So, but I'm not going to let my legs, my knees touch the floor. I'm keeping my chest up nice and high, really pushing back and arching my spine. And then I'm going to come back, keeping those legs really straight and walking my hands back to this position and coming all the way up. So I'm just going to do that one more time. Let me try it in this position, see if you can see a bit of a better angle. So standing up nice and tall, shoulders back, tummy tucked in. I'm going to roll down. This is where my roll down comes in. Keeping my legs straight, my knees are locked out. I'm going to walk my hands forward, 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 forward. Now, I'll come back a little bit, you can't see me here, right? But I've walked into this position, and I'm going to lower myself down, and then I'm going to start arching my spine into this cobra position. Can you see that there? Jolly good. So you hold that, and you push yourself back up. And then again, walk those hands back all the way, keeping the legs locked, knees locked out, and then coming up. 
So let's do that on the chair. You'll be able to see the difference. So standing up, coming down to that chair, walking the hand, obviously walk the legs away this time, not the hands. And then just allow your body to sink down into that cobra position. Come up and down. So you're literally walking up, but you're only rolling down as far as the chair. Walk the feet out. Allow yourself to come down into that cobra position. Come back up. Push back and come up. Okay, so there are some more exercises. Um, let me just see if I have a quick one we can do. Um, actually, the tabletop, tabletop bridge is quite a quick one. I'll just do this last one, then we'll have to have a little stretch because I could just, I could just stay here all day with you. Actually, it's quite nice, but um, time permitting, obviously. So. This is our tabletop. So again, this is gonna help activate your glutes and really work through this core area. So all you're gonna be doing is coming up into this tabletop position, keeping the head nice and level. Now, think about those glute muscles, really squeeze them in. And then you're just going to allow the bottom to drop down, not quite touching the floor, of course, and coming back up. Now with the hands, I want you to put your hands at that angle. So as you're pushing up, pushing up from the floor, getting into the shoulder area as well. So, hands out at 90 degrees, come up to tabletop position, make sure you're all in a nice level position, drop it down and come up. So again, a nice simple exercise to do. It can work through the shoulders, working all the way through that core and into that back area. Squeezing the glutes as you come up, really good glute activation exercise. So when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about dynamic stretching before you do your exercises, all, any, any one of these exercises or all of these exercises can be incorporated in your warm-up or you can just use them as a daily stretch exercise so um, it is really important when we talk about stretches that we do our stretches okay well it's been a pleasure thank you for allowing me just to show you a couple of those so i hope anybody listening does have a few aches and pains and then try those please let me know how you get on and see if it does improve um any, if you have any niggles, etc., just let me know how you get on. Or again, if you've got any questions, please feel free to contact me. So let's just do some warm down stretches. So let's just take one arm across the body, keeping the hips straight forward. Good. And then the other arm across the body. Excellent work. And let's just take them out. Now push the arms away, good, take them out and push the arms away, good, take them out, push the arms away. Now let one arm drop up, drop down, other arm push up and change, nice and easy, good. Hope you've all enjoyed today's stretches and our fab abs. So hopefully you're all feeling fabulous about your abdominals. Good, just take those feet a little bit wider and just rotate. Nice and easy. Now make sure you're still tucking in that tummy. Suck it in. Lift that pelvis. If you ever feel any pulling on your back, it's because you haven't got that correct technique. And it's so important that we just remind ourselves all the time to keep that good technique. It helps with our posture. Tummy tucked in, pelvis tucked under, chest lifted. Good. Three, two, one. Now let's just take a really nice wide stance. 
feet at 45 degrees and then to allow ourselves to go up and come down. Good. So just spread it out and come up. Good. Just open up those hips and down. Really push the knees away. Push them out and come up. Good. Two more times. That's two. And last one. Good. Just bring that mat back down here. And let's just lie on our tummies. Good. Just stay in this nice, gentle cobra position. Nice, gentle cobra position. We're going to lay our hands on the floor, we're going to rest our forehead on the floor, on our hands, and reach behind and grab the ankle. Just pull that ankle towards your bottom. And change. Pull that ankle in towards your bottom. And release. And then come out into your baby pose. Now, this is how we do our baby pose. We sit back on our heels. Our hands are out in front and our palms are facing down. Now what I want you to try is I want you to flip the palms over. Now really push the back of the hand into the, into the floor. Now you should feel here a slightly different pull on the shoulders, on the outer part of the shoulder here, into our rear deltoids. So this is just showing you that just by moving into a slightly different area, a little bit of a different technique, you can actually get a, a different stretch or a different part of the same muscle. Turn the palms back down and push them into the floor. That's one stretch. Now turn the hands over, push the back of the hands into the floor. Now you feel the difference in the stretch. Yes, and come back up. So again, it's just a little way of showing you that how you can do these different stretches. And again, when you're doing your own stretches at home, just try it. Maybe position your hand or foot in a slightly different way. And as long as it doesn't give you any pain, it may well be that that's, that stretch by modifying it could actually work for you a little bit better. So as I always say, listen to your bodies. That's where it's very important. So thank you very much indeed. Give yourself a big round of applause. And thank you for those that stayed with uh, both of those classes. I do hope you enjoyed it.